Well, hello there. Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm sure that you've been blessed as well as edified and transformed um, through all the episodes that we have been bringing to you on this platform. School of the Spirit is simply a platform for you to learn about the things of the Spirit in your relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. And I'm so sure that today, or this episode, as well as the others, will bring you clear and deep insight into the things of the Spirit. We've been talking about the Spirit of Revelation for a while, and I just I feel we need to do so much on it so we can have um, a full background understanding, because most of what the believer experiences in the faith will always be transmitted to him or her through the vehicle of revelation revelation is a very powerful um, um, landmark as far as divine communications is concerned and that's why i want us to address every part of it as we can uh, before we go to something different now the last episode we talked about uh, the spirit of revelation in the aspect of knowings uh, spoke to you about the knowing of revelation being one of the aspects by which the spirit of god reveals the things of god to us but today we want to talk about the aspect of revelation that comes through the word of god now, the Word of God, as you know, is one of God's communication tool for the believer. In the Word of God, we see and we interact with the thoughts of God. We interact with the mind of God through scriptures. And the Bible says, who has known the mind of God, that he should instruct him. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay, in Second Timothy chapter three, in verse sixteen, the Bible says all Scripture is given as an inspiration from God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So we see that the Scriptures, the Word of God, is given to us by the revelation of God's Spirit. The Bible says holy men move, spoke as they were moved by the Spirit. So if the Word of God is a revelatory piece, it means that we can study and understand an aspect of the Spirit of Revelation through the Word. Simply saying that God can reveal things to you on the platform of His Word. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, And the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke to me. When he spoke to me, there was an entrance. There was a release. And there was a motion. So the Word of God is a very, very, very accurate platform by which the things of the Spirit can be revealed to every individual that is born again. And I want us to talk about it in this episode today. I'm going to be as simple as I can, but the goal is for your understanding. And so you can label or articulate what's happening in your work with God, as well as be able to practice these things and grow deeper in understanding the operation of the spirit of revelation. Psalms 119, the longest chapter in the Bible which is um, actually in the middle of the Bible. All of it speaks about the Word of God from verse 1 down to verse 178. All of it, oh, 176, all of it speaks of the Word of God. But I want to pick a few verses or perhaps just a verse and then we'll ride into this um, discussion. In verse 18, it says, Open my eyes, 
that I may see wondrous things from your law. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. The law, of course, it's the word of God. But he's talking about access to visions. Access to visual impressions. Access to the things of the Spirit through the power of sight by the word of God. That means that the word of God opens a window of revelation to a believer. And so we can gain insight by, of the Spirit through the word. Okay? What are insights? Insights simply are truths that are perceived through scriptures revealed by God to the individual. Insights are truths revealed by God and perceived through scriptures by an individual. So you can gain revelatory insights through the word of God. Do you know that the word of God was designed to create pictures, impressions, visual impressions in the minds of his readers? Now, Every time you read something, you see it in pictures in your mind. That's what helps in your comprehension or understanding of that thing. So the word of God is meant to create visual impressions. He says in Habakkuk chapter 2, from verse 1, he says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my tower and watch to see what he will say to me. The word of God creates visual impressions. It's a window for revelation. It's more than just black and white. It's more than just um, stuff written. It is meant to open up. It is meant to tune in or to tune up your um, power of sight in the things of the Spirit. The revelation of God's Word can come to us through the following channels. Number one, when reading and studying when reading and studying you can gain access into the revelation that comes from god's word as you read the bible as you study the bible you can gain insights you can gain revelatory insights visual impressions through the word of god as you read and study again and again Number two, through meditation. While you meditate, while you think through the word, it begins to create visual impressions in your mind. While you meditate, revelatory insight. Sometimes God can bring the understanding of something else using the understanding that you get while meditating on scripture. That, okay, when you understand, oh, this is what the word of God says. Then you are able to relate it with this situation. You remember that's what Peter did on the day of Pentecost. When the Jews that gathered in Jerusalem uh, misunderstood what was happening. While the apostles and the disciples were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Peter told them, he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. This is just the third hour of the day. He said, but this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. Peter had read the writings of prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 when he spoke about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And while meditating on it, all of a sudden, it just clicked in his mind that this that is happening right here is exactly that which the prophet prophesied. It came to him as he meditated. All right. So meditation is one of the channels through which revelation that comes from God's word can be accessed. When listening, as you listen to the word, either you are listening to an audio Bible reading itself, or you are listening to a recitation of God's word. You know, these days we hardly do it, but I, I feel we need to go back to that. 
quoting and reciting of scriptures so that we can have the knowledge of God in our minds. Other religions do it and they force children to cram a whole book. But these days the knowledge of scripture is fast declining in the lives of many believers. They don't even know what to believe because they don't even know the scriptures. But Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he says, From a child you have known the holy scriptures, which is able to make you wise. The reason why it's able to make you wise unto salvation is because you knew, you know the holy scriptures, you were taught it. So listening can be to an audio Bible or to a recitation of scripture or to a message, listening to a message, listening to a message. You can gain revelatory insights by listening. Do you know that you can be listening to someone preaching under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit with good command of scripture? And you can enter into a season of revelation. You can enter into a window in the spirit and begin to access divine revelation. It is possible. It is possible. That's why most times when people listen to messages and they fall asleep or they go unconscious, they begin to have visions and dreams. Because that's one of the channels by which you can gain revelation through God's word. And then when in a conversation, as you discuss with people, as you have healthy conversations with people about the word of God, about the things of God, or trying to match uh, significance of things that happen in life, with what the scripture says you can come into the revelation of god's word you know the bible spoke of jesus in john chapter 2 you remember the story of jesus when he drove out the money changers from the temple and those who sold saying that this my house must be called the house of prayer but you have turned into a den of thieves and he told them, he says, destroy this body and in three days I'll build it up. And the Bible says the disciples didn't understand what he was saying until after he had resurrected. So obviously while they were discussing, reminiscing on what had transpired, they came into the understanding by the Holy Spirit and by scriptures that, okay, when Jesus when the Bible says the zeal for thy house has consumed me, as it was used in John chapter 2, they saw it practicalized in the life of Jesus. As at the time when it happened, they thought Jesus was just being rash or Jesus was just being harsh with the Jewish leaders. But much later, as they conversed after his resurrection, many of these things began to make meaning. So when you have healthy conversations with people who have good knowledge of scripture, you can just you know come into windows of divine revelation so what must you do to receive insights from the word of god i run it quick and we are done with this episode number one you must hunger for the word of god bible says in matthew chapter 5 blessed are those who hunger and test after righteousness for they shall be filled job chapter 23 verse 10 he says i have not departed from the commandment of his mouth i have made his word more necessary to me than my daily food they must hunger for the word of god jeremiah 15 16 says your words were found and i ate them and they were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart you must hunger listen spiritual things respond to hunger genuine hunger genuine hunger genuine hunger for the word genuine hunger how many christians sit up daily thinking about the word of god waiting and hoping for god to bring in revelations from his word to them how many christians yearn for it when was the last time you went on a retreat with your bible hoping that god will speak to you through his word you know you know why i treasure the word of god above all spiritual communication devices the word of God stands out because it's the most sure and accurate means of receiving divine direction. You can be wrong with anything but not the word. The Bible calls it the most sure word of prophecy. So you must hunger for the word. Number two, you must develop a reading and study culture. You develop it. 
make a discipline create a routine on reading and studying the word if you have to listen to it thank god for electronic media that has made things easy for us you can listen to the word you can read the word there are devotional apps read again and again and again if you read once and no understanding don't be discouraged keep reading and reading the bible says in revelation chapter 1 i believe verse 2 or verse 3 says blessed is he who reads the prophecy of this book that means just reading the word of god comes with a blessing in itself so you must develop a reading and studying culture again and again look for study bibles look for study materials sit down with the word 30 minutes one hour make it a routine and see god open to you the bounties and the treasures that are contained in his word number three you must submit yourself to the teachings of others especially those whom you perceive to have the truth those whom like peter said to jesus to whom must we go to say for you have the word of life john chapter 6 so you must listen submit your heart and your ears to teach us of the word of god men and women who fill you with the word of god in knowledge in wisdom and in understanding there is an aspect of divine revelation you may not access on your own that you may only access by listening to another person you know moses god told joshua everything that i commanded moses you do all that god commanded moses he wrote down as the law joshua had to read it Joshua had to listen to Moses' instruction. Alright? Daniel at some point needed the prophecies of Jeremiah to keep up in pace with what God was saying concerning the destiny and the future of the nation of Israel. So you must open your heart. I understand that we are living in days and times when there are all kinds of arguments and postulations flying up and down social media and the internet and it's difficult almost difficult to know who is saying the truth or not look for someone who speaks the truth of god's word in love and someone who is not all about castigating or smearing others no look for someone who teaches the truth of god's word in simplicity and listen to me don't look for popular names Look for those whom you perceive have the truth. Thank God for those whom God has risen in influence. If you perceive that they have the truth of God's word, listen to them. But if you perceive it's just about hate and fighting one another person or this or that, look for someone who will feed you with the word that you will grow and that your spiritual senses can be sharpened. And then finally, make meditation a lifestyle. Oh, not finally anyway. But number four, make meditation a lifestyle. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law will not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night, that you will observe to do according as it is written. Meditation, meditation, thinking through the word, turning the word over and over in your mind again. Psalms 1 verse 2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he doth meditate day and night. Spend time to meditate while in your office, while driving in your car, in the grocery store, at home, in the bus park, at the train station, at the airport, wherever you are, on a flight to another nation or to another city. Meditate on the word of God. Just like you think about things, think about the word of God. Wisdom can flow through your meditations direction counsel strategies god can give you strategies for your business from scripture as you meditate on it he has helped several people build great economies in time past he can release such insight to you if you are ready for it and then finally learn to revisit past notes Learn to revisit past notes. Past notes that you have made about your studies of the word, about messages you listen to, about insights that you receive. I do it a lot. Go back to your sermons, your jottings, your notes. 
there will be so many revelations you will discover there. In fact, you will even come into the understanding of some things you wrote then that you didn't understand. I do it a lot. I go back to my notes of two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. Sometimes I see so much richness in it that as the Holy Spirit leads me, I get to teach on those things again. Because the Word of God is ever fresh. It is never old. It is ancient but ever true. The words are words of wisdom and words of life. Always relevant to every generation. Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall remain. And I pray that God will open your eyes. Bring you into revelatory insights through the ministry of the word. Here's how Paul puts it in Acts chapter 20. In verse 32, he says, But now I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. You can only acquire what you see. That inheritance he wants to give you, he wants you to see it. And you can gain the revelation into those riches in glory as you study the word of God. Make the word of God your food. Make it your nutrition. Love it, read it, and live it all day all night. God bless you. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.